Now let's continue a new topic today called Python objects. Okay, so Python is an object oriented programming language as well. Python provides you functions, ability to call functions and everything that any other programming language provides in this, but Python also provides objects. It's going to be m more about definitions today and um, more about how it works and less about how to use it. So you must, you must try uh, creating objects and then you will get an idea. Okay, so in this course, uh, what we are learning is we are, we are going to basically learn the basics of classes and objects because data science does not require too much of object oriented programming. Okay. So we had learned the data structures earlier, like we had list, we had, we had dictionary and so on and list provided these methods, right? So these were basically objects. These are basically the classes of which we were creating objects. And if we are using say SQLite or some third party database, they also provide the objects and classes. Okay, now look at what we did earlier. The, in the, the first program that we wrote was, we took the input from the user and then we converted then we subtracted one from it and then printed it. And of course, here we also did a conversion from string to integer. So we took input, we processed and we gave output. That's what we did earlier. Now in case of object oriented, it typically the program takes input, does something, gives output, right? That's what that's what a program is. In case of object oriented, a program is made up of many cooperative objects. Instead of being the whole program, each object is a little island within the program and cooperatively and cooperatively working with other objects. A program is made up of one or more objects working together. Okay, so that and basically what we do is we break down our program into these objects and classes which interact with each other. An object is a bit of self-contained piece of code and data. An object is a self-contained piece of code and data. You remember dictionary? Dictionary was, what was it? It was key and values, right? It, 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 was, it was containing data, but it did not contain the logic or functions or code. So a key aspect of the ob object approach is to break down the problems into a smaller understandable part and then use them. So object provide us these boundaries that like in real life, what goes within a particular system should, does not be, should not be a matter to the users of that thing, right? As long as it is giving the desired output. So that details are hidden from the outside. Okay, so here is an example of a list and a dictionary. We're creating a list, we are creating a dictionary, and movies is a list and movie one is a dictionary. We are defining a movie one and appending this movie one to movies. Then we're creating another dictionary of movie two. And movie two, we are putting the director, title, release date, running time and ratings and appending that to the list. All right, and then we are iterating over the movies in the keys. Okay, and printing it. So, so basically your program looks like this. It has, here we have keys, uh, here we have list of movies and move, each movie is a dictionary and is an object and there are, there's a string and so on. So objects get created and used and you get output, okay? So, 
So each of the parts is code and data, code and data, and they're interacting with each other to give you the results, all right? So uh, a quick, again, a bit of definition. Class is a template like dog. Method or message is a defined capability of a class. Say, for example, dog can bark, right? Fields or attributes, a bit of data in the class like height of the dog or length, or object or instance, a particular instance of a class like lazy could be a dog. Okay, there are there could be many dogs, but the template of dog, the, the definition of dog is that it can bark, it has a height, and so on. Right? So so like a person, person has features and everything, but Sandeep Giri is a person. So Sandeep Giri is an object, while the person is the class. Okay. I'm going to skip this part. And the instance is basically creating an object out of a class. All right. The method is basically a, just like a function, normal function, which can operate upon um, the, the variables of a class. Okay. Here is an example of a, a class. The way we define a class is by the way of saying class party animal x equals zero define party. This is one function that we are defining inside a class. Here, the first argument of this function is self. Self means it points to that object, that, that current object. And self.x means this variable equals self.x plus one, and then we print it. Okay, we are going to give you a quick example of this. Package maybe after a while or yeah. So so you can see that the it has printed this. Now let's go ahead. Now let me increase the font. Great. Okay, so all right, so what we have is a class called party animal. Here we are defining x as a variable and we are defining this method which is inside this class. Okay, this method will, will be available on the object of this class and how do we create an object like this. Okay. So this party is just a method. A question from Tanmoy, what is, where is the constructor? Constructor is not here defined now, but we can define our constructor later on. So Python does provide a constructor, but it is not mandatory to define the constructor. Okay. All right, so I hope this code is clear. Self.x means, self means the current object and and dot means uh, the, the member of this current object and X means this, okay? So, so if there are, and once we have defined this class, we can define as many, as many uh, objects of this, right? So here, let's say, I'm going to use this here. First, let me define this, okay? So, we just defined a class called party animal. Right now there are no objects of it, meaning meaning we can use it. So you can see. So as in when we are calling this function called party on this object, the variable is increasing, right? Because this is what's happening. So when we, when we call party, the this method x is going to increase but if we define a new object of the same class let's call it okay uh, someone okay i call it someone and someone dot party right someone dot party and 
can see that for someone or party, the, the, the value is one. While a and dot party, the value was three. Okay. So this way we can define an object, a class, and then use it. So you can see that the, the value of X is different for different users, diff different for different objects. Okay, let me uh, print here saying, all right. This is, let's say someone, and this is, Okay, so you can see that the variable again starts from the beginning for the another one. And if you call the, the, the previous one again, let's say we call this one again here, what would happen is it'll continue from there. Okay. Okay, question from Tanma is that uh, X is private or public? X is actually public by default. So you can see that you can use this easily. Okay. A question from Abidda is that what is the function of X? X is just a variable X is just a member variable, which, which could be, there could be hundreds of such variables inside a class and you could use them from outside. Okay, so when we have to create a, our own data type, the other way of looking at a class is when we have to create our own data type, we can create that using class. Okay, like people have created list, people have created dictionary and so on. In the similar way, we could create our own data type having the functions and use them whenever required, right? All right, uh, question is what if we defined here like x equals eight and then run it? So, sorry not in this one, but the previous one. So let's say we defined eight, the beginning value of all of these will become eight, right? So it started from nine, 10, 11, and then the second object, nine, and the first object increases to 12. Okay, after 11. Is that what you meant to ask, um, Binta? Yes, this is the initial value of X. There can be a constructor as well. Okay, we'll talk about the constructor later. All right. So now, once we have defined our objects, we can also check for their data type. Okay, check for the data type. And here, when we say, type of this object, or let's say type of um, print type of so, or print type of n, right? The, you can see that the data type of both is party animal, right? So the way we used x equals dictionary, dict, dict is what we use to create object. In the same way, we can create our own objects. Okay, our own classes and use them. All right, so that's, that's, that's what it means by a class. Class contains variables and class contains functions. You can create many objects of class and use those objects without, or without touching each other's data. Right here, we are not touching each other's data. Both, both of the classes are maintaining their own variable. 
We can also look at the functions of the class using DIR. And if you say DIR N, right, DIR N, you'll see that there's a method called party and there's a variable called X. Okay, now question is the constructor. If you want to, if you want to define a function which gets initialized, which gets init, which gets launched when we are creating the object, okay? When we are creating the object, if we want to create a function, sorry, let me break it down. Okay, so this is how we are defining the class. Let me separate the use and the class. Okay, so here there is another class called party animal. It has a variable and it has the constructor. What is constructor? Constructor is nothing but a function that gets called when a object of the class is created. Every time somebody is trying to create an object, okay, okay, it is going to be called. Okay, so we could we could write some more things here. Let's say I'm writing a party animal is born. Okay, so that's what the function is. And let me just define this class. And every time I'm going to call this, right? It's, it says that I'm constructed a particular party animal is born. Okay, and when I do that for another object, when, we, when I do that for another object, then again, it's going to say the same thing. All right, so if you want to do something magical, if you want to do something magical, um, such as uh, initializing X equals to say, um, uh, some random number, okay, some random number. Then also we can we can do that if we want to initialize something. Also, if you want to do something at the, when the object is destroyed, what, what does it mean by object destroying? Obje object destroying is called when object is no longer used and Python chooses to delete that object. Then this function is going to be called. Okay, so it has constructors and, and it has also the destructors. Okay, so the, when the object is deleted, this is the function that gets called. All right, now we can create many instances of the class that we already discussed. And um, we can take argument in the constructor. Okay, in the constructor, the first argument is the default, the argument itself, and we can take the name as the argument from the user. So let's say here, we have the name as the argument, so we can pass that while creating the object. Okay, so you can see that here, what we are doing is we have taken the name in the constructor, which means this while creating the object, the default value of the name is going to be from the argument, okay? And when we call party, it's going to print this, okay? It's going to say, Sally party count one. It is uploaded on, on the GitHub. You can take a look. I've not changed much. Okay, I've not changed much. Let, let me just... Uh, let me just get push. No, there was another one. Yes, git commit and 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 push. And and means it will commit. And then once commit is successful, only then it will push. Okay, so I've done that. All right, so great, great. It is, I've kept it on the GitHub repository. You can use it from there. Wonderful, wonderful. So what we learned was we can 
define the constructors. We can take arguments in the constructors like the way we are passing these values. And we can also have something called a, a destructor, which gets called when, when the object is no longer in the use. All right. Now, in the classes, sometimes what happens is we realize that our class can be created by extending the existing class. Okay. In those cases, we can inherit as well. The way we inherit is by passing the name of another class in the argument. Okay. And basically, football fan will have, will have all the functions of party animal plus one more. Football fan will have all the functions of party animal plus one more. Okay, so a class is nothing but bunch of functions and variables in it, and it behaves like it behaves like a, a data type in itself. Okay, we can create as many objects as we want and use them like the way objects is nothing but a variable of the data type of a particular class, right? So it just objects is nothing but a variable of a data type of class, right? Like the way we had defined X and so on. Okay, no worries, Manoj. The recordings will be provided to you. So we were just quickly going over the, the object-oriented part of Python. Even if you skip object-oriented part of Python, it will be completely okay for the for the machine learning course. All right. So this is how this is how the inheritance works like. Okay. So here we can see that the football fans object is J while party animals object is S. On S we can call party but on J we can call both functions party and Touchdown, not tear down, touchdown. So if we try to call touchdown on this, on on the party animal, it's going to throw an error. Right? This is good, this is good, but it says there is no method called touchdown. Why? Because the parent class does not only has these method. This is the constructor, meaning the function that gets called whenever we create an object of this class. Okay? So as in when we call this, this is the way we create an object of a particular class. And as in when we call this party animal, uh, this constructor is called this init method underscore underscore init underscore underscore. This is how you define the constructor. All right. Okay, now let's take a look at the destructor. Destructor is like this. Destructor is underscore, underscore, del, underscore, underscore. All of the functions of a class must have self as the first argument. Okay. So while you're calling n dot party, it's basically calling this method with an an in an uh, a reference to the object itself. All right. So this is how you define you you do the inheritance in in case of Python. All right. So you can see that we are able to call these two methods, right? These two methods on on Jim, but on Sally, we, we are only able to call party. A question from Tanmay is that, can we call this? Not really, not really. This way, if you see, this is how we used to call in, in Java. Now, the, basically, in case of Python, we don't need to define the data type of an object without a value in it, okay?
All right. So probably your question is, can I convert one object into another? Of course, because 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 by default, in case of Python, we are not trying to assign one data type to another. Right. Therefore, therefore, that light that that actually casting becomes further easier. Right. In case of in case of Java, we had to define a variable data type, and only that kind of data type would fit in there. But in case of Python, that's not the case. In Python, when you assign something to some some variable, the whole value gets overwritten. Okay. So, so if you have, let's say, you have um, uh, an array of S and J. Right, you could in a loop call print x dot party. Okay. If you had this, uh, let me just um, you know comment this out, comment this out, comment this out. We could call this. You see, Sally get constructed, Jim constructed, then Sally party count one, Jim party count this, and you can see that we are able to iterate over different kind of objects comfortably. Why? Because party method is in S, party method is in J. Make sense to you? So this way, uh, this is how the polymorphism looks like. Polymorphism means something behaving, uh, something behaving like many things. Here, J is behaving like, J, J is having the party method as well. So J can behave like a party animal as well as football fan, right? Make sense to you? So that's pretty much about the modules in Python. Sorry, that's pretty much about object oriented programming language in Python. All right. Going back again, so we can create our own data type, which can have its own methods, okay? And the way we call it is by using, by, by calling this class like a function, okay? So party animal, the, the general tendency is the, the way we define the, the naming, the name nomenclature is that the name of a class is generally capitalized. All the nouns or all the words have their first letter capital, okay? While in case of functions, we generally prefer a syntax like uh, this all of the letters small and underscore and then another word okay so that's the that's kind of convention in case of python it's not really required you can have any kind of name as long as name of the variable or a class as long as it doesn't start with the digit and it's made up of digit and alphanumeric and underscore okay that's the name of the name of the variable in python can be anything anything alphanumeric and underscore as long as the first character is only uh, is not numeric okay so the same naming convention applies for variable name function name class name and so on okay now so we talked about how to use the variable name we could also check the data type of a object and we could also list the methods of the of uh, an object all right and somebody has raised yes we guess you have raised your hand is there a question or... all right good now moving ahead moving ahead the we could create these ma special methods which will be called when the class is constructed and uh, then 
when the class is constructed, we could define these methods. Okay. And um, we, I also showed you that we could create multiple objects and those of the, the variables of objects will not interfere. The X for first object will be different from X for second object. The values will keep isolated. Okay. And um, then we talked about inheritance. To inherit a parent class, we could use this. Okay. All right, so that's that's pretty much about object orientedness. A question from Tanmay, how to declare static variables like Java? How to define static variables like Java? Mm, I don't think Python has static variables. I'm not sure. I've not used a static variable in Python. And most of it, whatever the static variable provides you, you can generally emulate it using the normal variables. Yes, Binta has a question. Question is, is the first function in the class in it? and with the name of the variable self. Okay. So first function does not mandatorily need to be this. And this does not need to be mandatorily the first function. As long as the, there is a function with the name in it, that means this function is going to be called whenever we try to, we try to create an object of this function, uh, of object of this class. Okay, so as long as the constructor is named underscore underscore in it underscore underscore it will be called okay now the second is uh, question is what about self self is nothing but the reference to the object itself therefore therefore by default all of the functions must have must have this self variable Okay, just try to create another one. It will allow you creating, but when you try to call it, it's going to throw error. So let's say I'm trying to create a function like this and, and do, do something here. Okay, and uh, when we call this, so it is saying indentation problem. I will just fix it. Just copy this indentation. Cut that. All right. When the indentation is not equal to the previous one, then it throws error. So you can see that um, the. Let me just remove this part. In in Jupyter, you can just say Control slash or Command slash in case of Mac to comment out things. Okay, so if we try to call this method called pp, it is going to give error. You can see that pp takes zero argument while one was given. That means internally when we're calling this, it's actually calling pp with an argument called self. Okay, and uh, therefore we must define the self if we want to call this method from outside. If you are just calling this function from um, P, from another function. Let's see if it works. Okay, and you can see that the PP is not defined. See that? We'll have to call it using self dot PP, and then it'll throw an error saying the, that that method does not support uh, self method. Okay, so the important part that I'm trying to show you is that while defining a method, you, it, a method in a class must have at least one argument called self, okay? The first argument must be self. All right, but the init method can be third or second or a, any number, but the first argument for the function should be self. I hope that answers your question, Binta. 
Question from Pavan, how GC works in Python? Can we call destructor in the code? Yes. So I'm not sure you can call the destructor in the code, though it allows you calling the method. Good question. Question is, does how does garbage collector work in Python? And can we call destructor in the code? So you you can definitely call a destructor in the code. The only problem is that it is going to give you wrong results. All right. So what does it say? It says that this method is not existing. Let me define again. All right, so coming back to it, the destructor part, this is the destructor. Destructor is automatically called when we, when the object gets out of the picture. All right, so yes, first argument should be the function and must be the self. Does it apply to all functions in the class? If you want to use those functions, okay? At calling time, it will give the error. It will not give the error at the defining time of a class, okay? Great, so, so I think that will be pretty much uh, with respect to the objects and classes. All right, all right, so now let's talk about modules. Already we imported some of the classes like socket and other things. Those were the modules, okay? What is a module? Module is the piece of code written by somebody so that others can use it, okay? You install modules using pip in Python and there are few other ways to install module. There are quite a few modules that come out of the box with Python. Some of the examples are random. Random is a collection of functions. Random is a collection of functions and classes that has the methods related to generating random numbers. OS gives you this ability to to interact with the operating system. Say for example, you want to iterate over all the files in a folder that you can do using OS. With OS, you can also call, there are, there are methods to let you call any of the operating systems command. Then there was a module called RE for, for regular expressions. Then there is a, there is a module for date time using date time you could you could interact with you could interact with the the system date time and also manipulate the date and time then there is math some basic mathematical functions are provided here and xml basically and uh, if you have um, uh, you know if you have xml data and you want to parse it load it you can use the XML. If there is, there are modules for almost everything. Why, why we are studying Python is because Python is probably having most modules for various kinds of works, okay? The reason why we chose Python was because the machine learning libraries such as, such as scikit-learn and TensorFlow are available to us as well as it is really simple to use, okay? So that's the reason why we chose Python for our work. Now, now we need to, to, to take a look at the functions provided by a module, we could say dir, okay? So here we're trying to show you the list of files and when we do that, it will show me the list of files in my current directory. You can see that the files from my current directory are listed. These files, readme and others, are listed. 
okay now when we call random dot random so whatever name you import it with it will be these functions will be available like that so here when we say random the random dot random will be available to us all the functions of random can be called okay so and here are the when we say dir date time it will list all the functions of a module all right now moving ahead so Yes, no, it's getting uh, recorded, no worries. So we are just talking about modules. You can import modules using import method and you can do DIR on a, on a module to take a look at the fun functions inside it. So when we say import random, there will be a variable random available to you in your code. And on that, we can call the methods inside random. Say, when we say import OS, OS will be made available to you and you can call methods on it. All right. So question from Dinesh, uh, this is giving error. Okay, okay. So maybe you could try in Python 3. All right, so in the module, um, let's try to do something. I'll try to create a file. I'll try to create a module for, for let's say this. Let's say we, we have come up with this wonderful library of computing interest. We have defined a function which does the simple interest as in multiply principal with the rate and the time and divide by 100 and return the value. And then we have defined the compound interest, which takes three arguments and computes the compounded interest yearly. The T that is passed is number of years. And once we can, so we can just check if it is working fine or not. Yes, it is working fine. So now what we can do is we can create our, create our module using this, okay? Let's say I want I want this to be this to be separated out so that I can use it in many places and I can I, if I make any modification improvements to this everybody will get the updated functions okay so there will not be a duplication of code and I and we will be able to use it so what we are going to do is we are going to create a file called mylib.py and copy paste this piece of code into that okay so here is my file so i could delete that right so here is my file let me just delete it so that we can i can show you from the beginning what we're going to do is we're going to create our own modules quickly just to give you a good idea about the meaning of a module okay so can I delete from here? I don't think so. And what does this delete mean? No, 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 no. You are you sure you want to delete two files slash folders? No. Okay, I'll just delete only one. Okay. Now, then I'm going to create a text file. Okay, and copy paste this piece of code. Okay, this piece of code here. So the name of the file is going to be mylib. You can keep anything, okay? You can keep anything. Good, so now we have, uh, you know, created this file called mylib here. You see that in my current folder, all right? In the code here, we can simply import this module that we have just created. And the functions of mylib are going to be available like this, mylib.compoundInterest. Now you can imagine what it means by OS. OS, import OS means there will be a function called os.py containing all the functions. Okay, 
So this way we can create our own module and use it everywhere. Is it clear to everyone? All we did was we took this piece of code, put it in separate file called mylib.py, and since it was in the same directory, we were able to import it. Had it been in some sub directory, then we will have to call it using the directory dot that folder name. Yes. Okay. So what we learned was, yes, Prasant, you have a question for me? A question from Kamal, can I see the source code of any library I import? Yes, of course. Okay. Because all right. Yes, first of all, the easier way would be just to search for Python source code online. Most likely you're going to get the in the GitHub and that would be a better way to do it. Second, second, and in the local file system, you could take a look at the Python path. And what you have to do is you'll have to find where is the module located, okay? And then it, it'll help you out with respect to understanding uh, so you can actually, uh, there would be a method on the module in, or there will be a method on the module that will print the location of a module, okay, on the file system. And using that, you can go to that place and do that, okay? There must be a method on the module. You can try DIR. So if you say DIR, let's say OS, there would be a method on a module or dir my lib or can i do help my lib you can see that it is located here right so if you say help os right if you go to the bottom it is going to show you that this is located here right at this location and then you can open that Right. I'm not sure. Can I? How can I quickly see a file using Jupyter? Can I use percentage cat or something? Okay. Question is: Is the module file with the extension py? Yes. Module is nothing but a file containing the functions. So, and when we say import my lib. It is going to import. It's going to find, if I say import my lib, it's going to look for my lib.py in my path. Okay, and then import all these, import all the functions here. Question from Sakti, where is the recorded video of the last session? The, it would be available on the YouTube channel as well as it will be available in your my courses tomorrow. Okay, so what we learned was then that we, we created our own module quickly and then we are using that. Okay, we are using that. It is saying, it is saying that there is no method called compound interest. Why so? Maybe I'm making a typing mistake. My lib does not have an attribute called this. Okay. Let me just rename it for time being. My underscore lib. Okay, I just saved it. My underscore lib. And I'm calling that with this. Yes, I think it was conflicting with something else. So yes. 
All right, so just to rename the module, all I had to do was rename the file and that's it. A question from Kamal, can I quickly see the source code of a particular function in a file? Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but you can quickly see the whole file and use that, okay? And I'm sure that it does, does it, does it provide us some editor here, edit? Um, my underscore lib dot py or cat. Yes, you can use cat and then see. Yes, no, I'm able to see your questions. Oh, I see. Okay, there is something called Q and A uh, window as well. I was not looking at the questions window. So thank you for reminding. Okay, so a question from Noor is, so import a star will only import functions. That's right. And what else could be part of module functions, classes and other data structures? That's right. Very good point. So import star will import only the functions. It will import everything what's there in the the file. Okay, now uh, what else could be part of the module like functions, classes, etc.? Yes. So is there a way to secure the internals of the modules like not anyone to see what's inside? Mm, in case of interpreted languages, that's kind of not possible. So the way what we people do is they try to obfuscate it, but in case of Python, that's even not possible. Okay. All right, so now we can use the chat window itself. That should be good enough. All right, so <clears throat> what we learned was something interesting. We learned that we could create our modules quickly. We could import a module like this. We could say from my underscore lib, this was the name of the module. We could only import these two functions or we could say import asterisk. Now, when we do that, these functions are going to be made available as if they are local functions, right? So we could we could call this interest function like this. Okay, like this. So so the, the, this function, what we have imported from this module becomes part of the current, uh, current uh, context. So this way, this way we are able to we are able to use any any functions easily without having to say my lib my underscore lib dot something okay so this these are another ways of importing methods in python okay importing our first one was import my lib in that case my lib got imported and we could call all the methods of my lib or all the classes of my lib we could use and in the same way in the similar way, we could also say from the module and import the functions or the classes, and we could use those, or we could simply say import asterisk. Okay, so to to take a look at the name of a module, we could say a mylib dot underscore underscore name. This, these are the internal methods, and it would show you the name of a module, okay? So imagine that you would like to write a method in this class, which will run only if you are explicitly calling this, the explicitly running this um, math, this, this class, right? In that case, what you'll do is you'll say, if name, name equals main. So a, a lot of methods will, let's say you want to run a particular function only when people are directly calling this as a Python program because it's a valid Python program and people could call this Python program directly as well, right? And in that, in that if you want to restrict it, then you can put a condition like this saying, if the name of the module is main, that means, that means, um, 
uh, that means it will be run only if you are calling this uh, you are you are running this program directly you are running it like python my, my underscore lib dot py this will not run this will not run this will not run if we are importing this module okay so this print this will okay i think yeah the font got changed yeah this will not run when we are we are importing this module okay if we are importing this module say import my lib it that the function did not run but if we did not put this kind of a condition right if we did not put this kind of condition then this function would run okay okay so uh, let me just change the name because these modules once get loaded then they okay once uh, the, it gets loaded it is has to be unloaded okay so let me just remove this part or maybe just create another one and i'm saying import my my underscore lib underscore and you can see that main has printed okay so whatever you do in this will get executed if you want to avoid that happening you put this okay so now it is imported and the main method is not called okay so but if we say percent run and say my lib dot py it should run the main method the name main is not defined this is correct only right or i'll just print um, for time being i'll just print what it means by this method This is correct only. Okay, so what we, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to call this as. Okay, so I think. All right, I just it's basically a string. The name is a string, so I have to just put it as a string. So that was a mistake. All right. Now, what I'm trying to show you is that if you want to be want to execute a particular piece of code only when you are running it as program, then you put it inside this kind of condition, right? Those who are coming from Java, they they would be very used to writing public static void main, but here, because the creating module is extremely simple creating module is extremely simple you just create a file and put the functions in it and then start using it right so you can see that um i will put something more inside the main method okay let me again load it so you can see that while I say run, only then it it creates it it launches this method, but not here. Okay, if there was a method saying here print inside uh, inside my lib, then this method will be called will be called every time. Let me just change the name again or my general lib. I'm changing the name because otherwise I'll have to restart my Python kernel. And yes, because the, the name gets cached. And okay, or so you can see that here when we import this. 
where, so what we I'm trying to show you is this function this function is getting called even when we are importing things this function will get called even when we are importing things okay and once we import it then this this function can will not be imported again okay that's why it won't be printed again and um, when we run the when we run the program the main method this one will be executed all right so this condition basically stops a certain piece of code being called while being imported as the module a question from pavan can module have have class details just like functions can module have class yes you can have okay thank you garav a question from binda what can we do with name equals main method in filepy i think you got the idea now so the idea is to restrict certain piece of code from being executed while while it was while it was being called uh, as the module okay so that was a quick idea about module this is important to just give you a hang of what's where all right it's extremely simple and also one thing to note is that there's something called system.path and system.path is something which python goes through in order to locate your module okay so and the way you uh, system.path is nothing but an array of uh, things and you have to import says and say system.path okay so here you can see that these are the places when we say import something when we say import os or something it's going to look for those things at these locations okay including my home directory dot ipython okay it's going to look for these modules at these locations all right so we can also add our own place our own folder into this list okay let's say you have a good team and you are maintaining a project so what you do is the common functionality you can common things common legacy code we can put at a single folder and everybody can import from there so that way that way we can share our piece of code our libraries or modules okay <clears throat> so when we say pip install it downloads and copies the modules in the site packages and makes it available there okay so that's that's about it so we can we can uh, copy this uh, mylib.py in the syspath and for example i have put testmod.py in a my tmp folder i'll show you if i go to my root folder okay this is my home directory in cloud x lab at here i have created a folder called tmp inside tmp i have created a file called testmod okay test mod okay now if i try to import import test mod it's going to give error saying test mod is not found why because why it's not going to look for this in my tmp folder so to make it do that what i do is i added my folder in which my stuff is there into the sys.path array okay and once we have specified this directory uh, we have added sys.path our directory to the list you can see that it has appeared here and in fact since i have executed twice it has appeared twice now when i say import test mod now it's going to find in this it will try from here and till here okay so you can see that it has found my module all right so this way this way we are able to create our own module question from no uh, from where it installed what's the use case when we want to run the module instead of importing it okay <clears throat> uh, 
All right. Two questions. From where does it install? There are pip repositories from which it downloads. Those are those are provided by the pip command, and you can it pip internally goes to those repositories and downloads it based on based on various dependency graph. Now, what's the use case when we have to run module instead of importing it? Generally, the entry point of your program when we when we run something, uh, let's say. Um, whenever we are running, uh, whenever you are, whenever we are running things from the command line, uh, then we have to we have to use the main method. Okay. So, so the, if you want to provide an entry point, let's say you build a program and you are giving it to somebody, and those they they are going to run it from the console. And uh, in those cases, the main method comes handy. All right, I hope uh, that makes sense to you. Now, packages are, are another thing, uh, another thing in, in Python. Packages are a way of constructing Python's module namespace. For example, the module name a.b designates a submodule b in a package name a. Say you have a huge project sound. The to top level. Say, say, say you have a huge project, and let's take a look at this project. This project is called sound, right? Sound has got folders like formats, effects, and so on. So to create the namespace in case of Python, all you need to do is create this package create this folder structure. This folder structure looks like this. Formats, effects, filters, and so on. So, and to mark anything as a package, all you need to do is create this empty file. Create this empty file in that folder with this name exactly. There's no need of putting the any logic. If you want to, put any code that you want to uh, uh, run when the package is imported, then you can put that in the in it. Okay, but there's no need of anything inside this file. You can just have an empty file and that's pretty much. So take a look at how to create the packages. Okay, so you can basically create a package of your own and use that. And these are the modules. Each of these are the modules. Okay, this is a sub package. This is a big package. So package can have other packages within it. Okay, and uh, the package must have this file, even if it's empty. Okay, once we are done with this kind of folder structure, we can then either say import, import, import sound.effects.echo, sound.effects dot echo that's the module the last one or we could we could also just say import sound and then we could call sound dot effects dot echo dot echo filter okay so if we are importing things like this saying import sound dot effects dot echo we're going to use this whole name along with that a easier way would have been saying from this particular package, import echo, okay? Or from a particular module, just import a function. So these are other ways of importing function. So it is up to you whether you want to just import functions or classes, or you want to import a package, or if you just want to import a package, then also you can do that, or you could import the whole whole namespace, okay? So this is how the packages work. All right, one more thing I wanted to uh, explain to you is uh, using percentage time it function inside the, inside the, inside Jupyter, it gives you how much time it would take. So time it is a utility that you can use in normal programs as well to see the time taken by any program. Let's say um, let's say we want to see 
how much time is being taken by by this compound interest okay so we could say percent time it and that's it so you can see that it is uh, trying to compute the interest and for whatever reason it's going to it's taking strangely a lot of time okay okay so time it is um taking a bit of time let me just uh, try to trust this notebook maybe it will make it easier okay so while calling any function we could use the time at utility utility provided by provided by jupiter in order to just test if something is working fine or not so here this is what we were showing so interest method we are calling by the way of time it okay it will show you it will run the the function via profiler and and will display the the detail the display the time taken by the function so it says that interest computation took around 169 nanoseconds okay all right so that's that's pretty much with respect to the the python in general all right thank you everyone bye bye have a good day